Hey guys, it's KJ from the Scariest Movie Ever channel on YouTube. I've been wanting to do a video on this subject for quite a while now. What is the beast system? The beast system is a term that I've used for many years. And it's the system that we're in. Most of you by now realize that there is a worldwide conspiracy being orchestrated by an extremely powerful and influential group of genetically related individuals at least at the highest echelons, which include many of the world's wealthiest people, top political leaders, and the corporate elite, as well as members of the so-called black nobility, which has to do with the British crown. And all of these groups working together have one common goal, and that's to create a one-world fascist government, stripped of nationalistic and regional boundaries that would be completely and totally obedient to their one-world agenda. Their intention is to affect complete and total control over every human being on the planet and to dramatically reduce the world's population. While the name New World Order is a term frequently used today, I choose the beast system when referring to this group. And that's what I wanted to do this video, is to identify the principal organizations, institutions, and individuals who make up this vast, interlocking spider web of elite conspirators. So somewhere near the very top of this pyramid that we call the beast system exists an extremely elite organization known as the Council of the Thirteen Families. These thirteen families, these thirteen bloodlines orchestrate all of the major world events. As the name suggests, the Council consists of the top thirteen most influential families on earth. Humanity has been experiencing a massive awakening and knowledge over the last several years, so increasingly there is a large number of people who have become aware that 99% of the Earth's population is controlled by an elite, quote-unquote, 1%. But this council of the 13 families consists of less than 1% of the 1% elite, and nobody on Earth can apply for membership. In their opinion, they are entitled to rule over the rest of us because they are the direct descendants of the fallen ones, or what they refer to as the ancient gods. They consider themselves royal, elite. So if we really want to understand who and or what runs this beast system, we have to take a look back at the Jesuits. High-level, Jesuit-authored and directed Illuminized Freemasonry is the Devil's Invisible Empire, or the beast system. The Society of Jesus is a scholarly religious congregation of the Catholic Church, which originated in the 16th century, Spain, and the members are called Jesuits. Ignatius of Loyola was a nobleman from northern Spain who founded the Society. He had a military background, and the members of the Society were supposed to accept orders anywhere in the world where they might be required to live in extreme conditions. And accordingly, the opening lines of the founding document declares that the society was founded for whoever desires to serve as a soldier of God, to strive especially for the defense and propagation of the faith and for the progress of souls in Christian life and doctrine. And this is why many times Jesuits are actually referred to as God's soldiers, God's marines, or even the company. So the Society of Jesus, more commonly referred to as the Jesuits, are basically the armed militia of the Roman Catholic Church. So they were sanctioned in 1540 by Pope Paul III with one mandate, and that was to defeat Protestant Christianity and to regain worldwide papal rule. To achieve this massive task, they employed ever-adapting methods of pseudo-education, social programs, infiltration, and all wickedness that could possibly be conceived. Needless to say, they are achieving great success in their mission. Between 1555 and 1931, the Jesuits were expelled from at least 83 countries, city-states, and cities. And practically every instance of expulsion was for political intrigue, political infiltration, political subversion, and inciting political insurrection. Throughout history, the Jesuits are known for their deception, spying, infiltration, assassination, and revolution. They worked deep into the political field and plotted through politics through world countries. 
When the Jesuits are expelled from a country, they simply change strategies and return to the country they were expelled from under a new disguise. It's also very important to note that Nimrod is oftentimes referred to as the father of Freemasonry. So this is where the banking families come in, and in this case we're talking about the Rothschilds. The real power behind the United States is the Rothschild banking family, which can trace its roots to 1743, when Moses Amschel Bauer put the red hexagram above his doorway. That was also the year his son Meyer was born in Bavaria. In 1760, Meyer would change the family name from Bauer to Rothschild after that red hexagram sign. Meyer Rothschild continued his father's money lending business and also got into the business of hiring out Hessian mercenaries to foreign countries at war, resulting in vast profits for the family. Loaning to governments directly was the logical next step, mainly because it was more profitable than loaning to individuals. After all, a nation's taxes were much more likely to come through and pay the debt than an embattled businessman's profits. So now, seeing a way to control world governments through debt, Rothschild thought up a system based on the rabbinical Jewish book, the Talmud. Talmudists are Jews that follow the teachings of the Talmud, which is one form of Jewish law and one that many have claimed is anti-Christian and sexually immoral. The nation of Israel was created in 1948 with a new flag showing the Star of David, a symbol that had come about in the 1600s, and which the Zionists adopted as their symbol in 1897. The Star of David, however, is very misleading as King David never actually had a star symbol. His son, King Solomon, used that symbol when he ruled the Kingdom of Israel during the 900s BC. Oftentimes here on my channel we'll talk about the language of symbols. And to truly understand what a symbol means, oftentimes we need to go back to the origins. And that same rule applies right here with the so-called Star of David or the Hexagram. That symbol is actually an ancient sign of magic, witchcraft, sorcery, and occultism, as well as the casting of horoscopes and reading of zodiacs. Solomon was thought to have turned away from God, which led to Israel's destruction. One of the reasons for that may have been the use of this star symbol, which was associated with Remphon, an ancient Egyptian star god, or a fallen angel. The symbol was also that of the worshippers of Moloch, a god of the Ammon people. It was a neighboring nation of Israel in the 900s BC. And this was also a god that people would sacrifice their children to. Because Moloch encouraged child sacrifice, typically by the parents, Solomon had many temples built for his foreign wives, and pagan abominations were worshipped there, including idols to Moloch. The star symbol, or hexagram, helped with this. It had six points that formed six equilateral triangles, something that allowed the insides to form a six-sided hexagon. This leads to six points, six triangles, and six sides, or 666, the mark of the beast. And all of this was associated with Moloch or what today we'd consider Satan. Moloch was a false god that tempted Solomon, leading to the downfall of Israel, the Babylonian captivity, and subsequent exile of the Jewish people, both those that were innocent and the idolaters. It's really interesting when you look at the history of Israel at this time, because Israel fell apart into two different countries in 930 BC, the kingdom of Israel to the north and the kingdom of Judah to the south. And sometime in the 720s BC, the Assyrians invaded the kingdom of Israel and defeated it. The Assyrians hung on until 605 BC, and the Israelis and Judah did the same until the Babylonians swallowed up their state about 15 years later. At that point, the Jews found themselves exiled until Assyrian king Nebuchadnezzar conquered Jerusalem in 586 BC. So the continued journey of the Jewish people is much too long of a story to explore right now, but the basic elements we need to understand. These elements of their story are important to our very own, and important if we're to understand how the world truly operates today, and how this beast system has existed for so long. 
In the 1200s AD, the Mongols were pouring out of Asia and killing or enslaving all the people they came across. Part of their enslavement was mental more than anything, and consisted of converting to the Jewish faith. Many that converted didn't want to, and these people became the basis of the Ashkenazi Jews, a group that many believe rejects Jesus and accepts Satan. The real power behind the Ashkenazi Jews is the Rothschild banking family which can trace its roots to 1743 when Meyer Bauer was born in Bavaria. That was also the same year his father had put the red hexagram above their doorway. 17 years later, they'd be known as the Rothschild family. Many believe the Talmud is the opposite of the Torah. While the Torah worships God, the Talmud worships Satan, they claim. Rothschild used a twisted form of the Jewish Talmud to create satanic teachings that formed the basis of his secret organization, the Illuminati. In 1776, the organization was complete, and Rothschild used his associate Adam Weishaupt to infiltrate the Continental Order of Freemasons so that Illuminati doctrine would appear in their lodges all over Europe and later in the world. In my opinion, Freemasonry and a handful of other secret societies truly are the backbone of the beast system. It's through these many secret societies with all of their rituals and their secret oaths to one another that the devil's work has been done in shadows for centuries. We can trace the origins of Freemasonry, as I said earlier, all the way back to Nimrod. But you can also go back to 1400 BC when the Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten built a temple in El Amarna that became the first mystery school, a place where human sacrifice and mind control were common, with initiation rites identical to those of modern Freemasonry. Akhenaten was also the pharaoh that moved Egypt from polytheism to monotheism, a system of worshipping just one god. And it would be nearly a thousand years later that those mystery school ideas would go to Greece. And it was during the time of Erechtheus, who was known as the earthborn king of Athens and was raised by the Greek goddess Athena. From the Greek world, the ideas circulated, heading to the Romans to become the mysteries of the Mithras. At the same time, Mithras slowly took on more aspects of Gnostic thought in the West. As the Dark Ages took hold after the fall of Rome in the mid-400s, the old mystery school ideas morphed with Christianity and Eastern belief systems to take on the rudimentary form that Freemasonry is today. So the Rothschilds' banking dynasty continued to grow worldwide, and back in Europe, the Vatican became more entwined with the Rothschilds themselves. In 1848, Pope Pius borrowed 50 million francs from the Rothschilds, or roughly $10 million. And by the end of that year, it was determined that the Vatican was about $30 million in debt to the Rothschilds. So typically for me, when you start talking about finances or financial systems, I get pretty bored. But not in this case. It is important to follow the money of the beast system, and that's what we're doing in this case. Now, having wars has always been really important to the Illuminati or to the shadow controllers. Again, the secret society that the Rothschilds had a hand in creating back in 1776. Nothing created more long-term debt obligations than war, and no form of debt was more secure than that backed by taxpayers. So this really is a difficult truth for many people to accept. But of course the Illuminati knew it would be. So that's why they set up the Anti-Defamation League in 1913. So that anyone speaking out against the Rothschild family or the Illuminati in general would be labeled as an anti-Semitic, anti-Jew. So it's also important at this point to mention John D. Rockefeller, the Rockefeller family. Shortly after starting the Standard Oil Company in 1870, John D. Rockefeller became the world's first billionaire. He used his money to help create and fund the Federal Reserve along with the Rothschild family, which gave these families the ability to print money out of thin air. This put them well above the U.S. government in terms of power and influence, and this move to gain power over the government and the people via a rigged financial system is a historical event not often discussed in school. Also not discussed is the fact that Rockefellers are responsible for the awful condition of the public education system, which of course is one of the reasons we never really hear about this in school. Many years ago in the USA, for example, much money was poured into education by the Rockefeller created National Education Association with the help of the Carnegie Foundation and later on the Ford Foundation. 
The result of the efforts of such organizations can be seen worldwide today in the real purpose of the education system, which is to teach children and young people that reward comes from accurate memory recall, from heavy repetition. Non-compliance will be punished, and acceptance that truth and what is real comes from authority. Thus, the real purpose of the education system is to cultivate conformity and prohibit critical thinking about anything of real importance. So again, if we're going to follow the money, it's always really important to keep your eyes on the Rockefeller family and the Rothschild family. And the fact that both of these powerful banking families have joined forces should be a great cause of concern. Especially when you consider these guys are behind funding the United Nations, NATO, the Council on Foreign Relations, and even the Trilateral Commission. I mean, John D. Rockefeller himself helped to start up the pharmaceutical industry that enslaves so much of humanity today. He worked to outlaw hemp. He and his family hijacked the educational system, which enslaves so many millions of people today. They co-founded the Federal Reserve, of course, with J.P. Morgan and the Rothschild family. So this is where we go back to that idea of the false left-right paradigm, Democrats and Republicans, and typically these groups are all funded by the same people. The Council for Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission are both fantastic examples of this, because Republicans and Democrats are members of both of these groups. The United Nations is funded by these families. What is the United Nations really there to do? It's all about power and control. So again, we're just examining how this beast system actually works. So these powerful families, which were also all connected through Freemasonry at this time, created something that we refer to as the Round Table, and you can see it right here. The Trilateral Commission, Royal Institute of International Affairs, the Club of Rome, the Bilderberg Group, most of you have heard of that, the United Nations, the CFR. This is a very clear example of how these families, these Masonic Illuminati families, have truly been able to run the world. And more importantly, and to the point, continue doing the devil's work in darkness. These are the foundations of the beast system. So for any system of thought, or for any agenda to grow and to mature, it's imperative that you get the minds of the youth. You get the minds of the children. Because children are the future. So of course with this beast system, this wicked system of control, we find tentacles extending into every aspect of education. So we've already seen how these banking families are behind our modern education system. And of course the same extends to the universities. There was a major push many years ago to popularize atheist professors and atheism in general. Many of these educators, teachers, modern-day philosophers were put in place through many grants they found from the Rockefellers and from the Rothschilds. There was Nietzsche, there was Francis Bacon, John Locke, René Destarte, David Hume, just to name a few. All of these people put in place at major universities questioning the Bible, born from Jesuits. So these really were the seeds of the so-common now atheist professor. Seems that practically every university out there is filled with atheist professors. And of course all of this made way for Darwinism, evolution. So is it any wonder that prayer has been pulled out of schools? Anything to do with faith has been pulled out of schools. But what is it that they push and promote? Evolution, of course. And it's very interesting. Even now you can find many stories out there with headlines such as this. Millennials are choosing socialism. Millennials are choosing Marxism. Yet millennials have no idea what they're dealing with. We haven't seen <coughs> how bad Marxism or socialism can be in America. At least not yet. But if any of these people had actually lived through it, to see the end game, think Venezuela, nobody would want this. It's also important to note that these are all godless men. These are all godless people that have been promoted. These are all godless people whose ideas have been promoted. And the way I see the world is, if you're a godless person, if you don't have the Holy Spirit within, you're merely a puppet, a puppet to be used by the enemy, 
a puppet to be used by this beast system. Here's another example of that. This is Sigmund Freud. Freud's work affects so much of modern man even now, it's not even funny. But what's most important to note is how Freud was used, how this godless man was used. He was used to create the fall of our conscience. Freud and other scientists like himself taught us that you can explain away your sins through psychology. And this is how Satan killed our conscience through these godless men. And this is another reason why modern man won't always look for these spiritual problems to our issues. Instead, it all has to be psychology, right? Psychology can explain everything away. And another very common part of this control grid is Hollywood. Hollywood plays a major part in the conditioning of the people, the programming of the people. This massive mind control that's taking place all around the world. And it's affecting each and every one of us. Hollywood glamorizes sin, every single one. It teaches us to be worldly. It creates false idols in place of a real God, a loving God. Hollywood is truly one of the most dangerous components of this beast system. And throughout this last generation, we've also seen the birthing of many cults. So we're attacked on so many levels. This beast system is constantly beating the idea out of our heads of a loving God or of a Savior in Jesus Christ. And it replaces true faith and true love of God with these cheap knockoffs. But as human beings, it's just a part of our DNA. We want to understand the world around us. We want to understand our place in this world. So when the beast system is constantly mocking God or constantly mocking Christ, many people find themselves lost. So again, that's where this rise of the cults comes in. But it's not just these cults that mock God or mock Christ that I'm talking about. It's not just these anti-religion or anti-faith cults. In fact, it's religion itself. Religion itself is very much a cult. Let's take a look at how this beast system has divided people of faith. You have the cult of Mormonism with roots in Freemasonry. You have the Seventh-day Adventist cult also with roots in Freemasonry. You have Christian science, also with roots in Freemasonry. We also have the Jehovah's Witnesses, again with Freemason connections. There's also many branches called the Church of Christ. Now, some of these do have connections to Freemasonry. But I will say that my family, you know, I was raised in a Church of Christ. And my particular church, they believe that the only people going to heaven are people that are Church of Christ. I don't believe that, okay, but many people in uh, in my family's church do, so I'm just throwing that out there, but once again, this is that cult mentality. To me, this has nothing to do with following Christ, with reading the Bible for yourself, with loving God with all your heart, and having a relationship with God. It has nothing to do with that. You know, we've been so divided and broke apart with all these different denominations. I read a while back that there's somewhere close to 15,000 different denominations of the Christian church. I mean, that's just insane. So religion is a cult. Religion, as they say, is the opiate of the masses. Religion, to me, is a huge stumbling block and obstacle in the way of true faith and a real relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And so that's what all these denominations have done. That's what the beast system has done with a very simple faith. The very simple faith in Christ. It's divided all of us brothers and sisters in Christ. You see clear examples of that on YouTube. Some of the most cruel and hateful people I've ever encountered on YouTube have been people that claim to be Christians from different denominations. But this is what the beast system does to everything. It takes what's pure, it takes what's good, and it mutates it. So this video, it could have been like four hours long, okay? Because there's so much to cover. But I wanted to give a basic understanding of how the beast system works and how it's been here since the very beginning and what it's turned into and the effect it's having on humanity. And I didn't want to make a four hour long video about that. But I feel good. I feel like I got all my main points out that I wanted to get out. And I think I've made a good case for this. This is the beast system that we're in. But you don't have to be a slave to it.
knowledge really is power. And this is a spiritual battle after all. And I do believe it has to do with God, it has to do with the devil, with the Bible, with truth, most importantly with Jesus Christ. So I hope this video helps you. Once again, as always, thank you so very much for checking it out. And until next time, you guys, take care of yourselves, all right? And I'll talk to you a little later.